Well, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our beautiful viewers around the globe, and welcome to another Intimate Conversation um, chat. And today, I'm so excited. I get so excited about all our guests, but I feel like this is going to be a very special conversation in regards to us here in New Zealand as well, but also the globe with the mahi, the work that this beautiful sister of ours does. And um, so without further ado, I would like to welcome Tira Kura Kingisaya. Welcome. Thank you so much, Mandy. It's a pleasure to be here. Beautiful. I'm so happy that you wanted to come in and say yes to me and asking you to an invite invitation to come in onto this conversation. Um, the way that I introduce you in is one question that I ask is whether you were quite an aware child when you were young. But what I'm first going to do, I'll just get you to ponder on that for a minute while I actually read your bio and your introduction here for everybody to just get to know you a wee bit um, better and understand where you come from in this conversation. So te rā kura singi, kingi saya, sorry, Priestess of the Kopu Womb of Venus Temple and Waitaha Grandmother. She is her passion for ecstatic living and honouring the rightful place of the Divine Mother. In the heart and soul of humanity once again. She is an artist, a rongo medicine woman, empowerment coach, a ceremonial ceremonialist. <laughs> with a potent mission to decolonize the soul and walk the beauty way of truth, freedom, joy, bliss, prosperity, and sovereignty with the, into a state of higher euphoria. In 2014, Te Rākura was initiated as a young Waitaha grandmother and water carrier, leading a ceremony to blend the sacred waters of the world. Ever since, she has been shown her sacred path through the teachings of Waitaha and fulfilling her prof prophetic role that was shared with her by Waitaha elder Barry Brailsford during a sacred stone journey in 2015, where he reconnected the prophecy of the return of Titi Raukawa, the shining one to flip the walker the right way up. Much has been revealed on this journey as she deepens the mystery of the prophecy to discover Titi Raukura and the, as the Kaitiaki guardian of the blue Ponamu, Hini Aotea, offering deep healing for humanity with its higher love, grace, truth, peace, and freedom codes, and opening the doorway of the Hawaiki Tapu and Blue Diamond prophecy. She is a spiritual warrior, humanitarian, rainbow bridge builder, green fairy, dragon rider, ceremony facilitator, and intuitive, sharing the remembering and wisdom of our ancient indigenous past and lineages of originals star-seeded and star-blossomed for this timeline. Through ceremony, <clears throat> body intelligence, womb wisdom, alchemy, quantum light code transmission, light language, rainbow readings, avatar art, and indigenous plant medicine. She is passionate about supporting others to find their soul path, assisting them to fully step into their own mastery by facilitating their rebirth through divinely guided processes. Shared from her kitty of eclectic gifts, divinely expressed through the power of higher love and euphoria. Beautiful. My fumbling through that, honestly, <laughs> reading for me sometimes, it's like my head's going too fast for where my eyes are at. <laughs> so, <laughs> honestly, but anyway, we got through and thank you so much again for coming in. So mm. uh, amazing work. I've been following this mahi that you've been doing for quite a while and it is very beautiful and very ceremonial and all of those things. So were you an awakened and aware child, Tiraku, or when you were when you were, you know, little? Like how far back do you remember being awakened? Because I'm pretty sure you were. 
<laughs> well, yes, I was the black sheep of the family. <laughs> and uh, my siblings always used to say to me that I was found under the cabbage tree because, you know, I was nothing like them. And yeah, <laughs> I was definitely really sensitive and had an amazing imagination. I would kind of have Avalonia in my backyard where there'd be mm -hmm. dragons and a princess and treasure to find. <laughs> oh, cool. And so, you know, my imagination actually was my greatest respite, but it was also my greatest nation. You know, I felt like I belonged in that realm yeah. so the world I could never understand it it was upside down to me I couldn't understand why people did what they did and actually one of my things that I used to love doing is hanging upside down yeah because it felt like I was hanging the right way up <laughs> oh I used to do that yes <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to relate to that you know, yeah. on this on this channel, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I got bullied quite a lot because I was so sensitive, and uh, I could pick up on people's energy really quickly, and uh, yeah, I found myself often be being targeted because of my my soft heart, even though I kind of you know later on I've learned how to be, you know, more yeah, get a tougher skin. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> around me you know I get more thick skinned but uh yeah as a child I was deeply sensitive and I used to get you know really I used to get really wounded yeah so yeah um but my mother saw me and on some level she she catered to my sensitivities you know like and my creativity as well I was really creative so I loved helping her in the kitchen and working with alchemy in the kitchen and recipes. So I sort of ended up baking my first cake when I was about five, you know, oh, so no. yeah. without help, just kind of, you know, using my own alchemy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I was a head and shoulders above my older sister. So it um, created a little bit of a, rift in our relationship and uh yeah I was also one of these kids that didn't really know my left from my right so right yeah <laughs> I got kicked out of ballet school <laughs> but I love dancing you know I still love dancing to this day it's one of my great passions and uh then later on I um yeah I sort of yeah started to go into my cave a little bit and start you know developing my own I guess my own alchemy you know within myself so yeah I was I was quite experimental yeah as a child yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that getting kicked out of ballet I'm I'm sure that was because you couldn't conform really it was more that you wanted to do your own free flow <laughs> <laughs> you know rather than just have to do this like that <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely but yeah. yeah really dreamy you know and I even when I went to school like I was in a daydream most of the time because I just didn't understand why or what they were trying to program into us actually yes, none yeah. of it made sense I was thinking well why are we having to repeat these stupid equations and oh, you know and learn this false history you know it did feel false to me like I was always able to pick up on on the real bullshit yeah I get it I I, I totally couldn't fit in I didn't fit in I was always like it you know I remember observing it was like observing having this Mandy here but there was this observer that I was very aware of that was sort of just watching on and and knowing that all this doesn't fit, just didn't fit. And how I was going to do this, I didn't know, but I knew it just didn't fit me. <laughs> yeah, lots of things didn't add up. People and the yeah. way they went about things, it was sort of senseless stuff that I I really questioned. 
still do <laughs> yeah and even competition like this is a big yeah. thing right competition I could never understand why everyone was competing against each other and getting nasty to yes. me that was just the most repulsive thing imaginable yeah and and so I never understood competition I always wanted you know like for everyone to have their own ball they don't have to then chase that one ball you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Never yeah. relate to it, seriously. <laughs> True, I know. I know, I know. I was never into competition. I still find it sort of uglyish, you know, and when it gets ugly anyway. But um, yeah. So your mum got you? Yeah, mum got me. And uh, on some level, she protected me from my siblings who were like, Rah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of always at me, you know, for something because they knew how to. They knew how to sort of you know, yank my chain. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, no, I was, I love my mum. And, you know, even now, even though there was some drama that happened in my teenage years, uh, my mother, I think she must have had a breakdown of some sort and just could not cope with these teenagers. My sister was kind of out of control and my you know there was there was stuff going on in the family lots of different pressures my parents had split up way earlier so she was single mum you know she was a single mama and um and then she lost the plot one day and basically dumped us all at our father's doorstep oh. and my stepmother was none too pleased <laughs> about mm -hmm. it. So there was lots of pressures and tensions there for some years, actually, because mum then went and had another family and, you know, like almost we were second, you know, right. secondary yeah. to her life. We were, she'd created a new life for herself and and there was a big wounding there, you know, that took yeah. a long time to to work through. And uh, I've now been doing, you know, I've been doing a lot of work with it and mm. really feel like since I've been doing my holy womb chakra work, the rift between mother and daughter has, you know, become, yeah, beautifully aligned. There's been so much forgiveness, you know, through some of those unconscious behaviours. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and there was wounding there for some time, but, you know, those have been healed, I feel. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. sure if they've been healed with all of my siblings because I know they they still hold things around mm -hmm. it. But, uh, yeah, definitely with me. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. the stuff that gets passed down through our ancestry too, eh? You know, the story just continually goes round and round and round and we just repeat repeat and eventually like us we've come in this lifetime to really clear that stuff out so mm -hmm. we can move into this new world so Tera Kura when what how did your spiritual path sort of sort of take fold like how did what was there an event or how did that come about well to be honest I feel that you know the stuff <laughs> The stuff that happened with my mama back yeah. in way back was actually um, was the great teaching for me in this mm -hmm. lifetime. So with when it came to my own having my own children and having, you know, the responsibility and the care and the love that goes in with being a, a parent. Yeah. Uh, I I was quite um you know, I realized the importance of that. And so I was here to break the cycle and break the chain. So my first child was actually, uh, you know, I had him when I was 90, uh, when I was 21 and, you know, way back in the day. Yeah. And uh, he, I became a, I became a death doula quite early. So he, he was born with a lot of problems and they were actually doing a lot of spraying, aerial spraying in the sky for the painted apple moth. And and I feel like perhaps that was one of the reasons why he had all these health problems. Oh, so he only lived for nine months oh. and he had grown mal epilepsy. And, you know, it was all that timeline of the harmonic convergence. Yeah. 
Right. So he crossed over. It was, you know, like nine nine months to the day, nine months before the harmonic convergence. And uh, I went into a really deep, deep dive, you know, as a 21-year-old, just coming yeah. into my, you know, mother adult. Yeah. And, um, yeah, really kind of felt this big whirring of energy that I needed to work through, you know, the, of this lifetime, this this gift that that I didn't realize well, was a gift at the time, but, you know, yeah. uh, the, the pressure, the pressure of, putting on such a delicate heart you know first time mama was yeah, yeah really kind of broke me down and then I found art my greatest solace so I started painting and drawing and I attended a sculpture class and started getting you know like really expressive with it and I found that was my release yeah for the death process so through the through the art process I was able to find those uh the the deep deeper aspect of myself being able to express it in that way and I feel that my spiritual journey kind of started then uh and I was you know in some ways I was still going through the highs and the lows so you know it took me a while to get to get my beat on the ground properly and yeah. then I started to read read you know inspirational authors and Louise Hay actually was one of my greatest inspirations at yeah, that time who helped great. me through yeah. yeah she's she's awesome yeah and so she literally helped me to heal my life from all that pain and trauma mm. and uh and then I start, you know, and then I had another two children later. And then another, you know, like when they were in their 12th, 13th year, their father, who I was, you know, married to, but the marriage didn't work out. Uh, he he came and he took my children away, which, you know, like inspired them to come and live with him because, you know, they needed to be on their hero's journey to be yeah be fair yeah and it, it really broke my heart <laughs> so yeah because I I saw that he was you know like being a inspiration for them and quite, there was a manipulation there actually mm. where they weren't um free to be to love me in the way yeah. that I felt I, you know, needed to happen for us yeah. and for me to be involved in their life and in, in a deeper way. So that another big deep dive happened for me where I was really searching for answers. And it was almost like, you know, the stuff that happened with my mama, you know, of leaving me. Well, now my sons were leaving me. So, yes. you know, it was not my choice. So it was almost like a yeah a cosmic joke you know a big, yeah. flip, of the, <laughs> big yeah. flip of the wheel and uh yeah I, I really struggled for years and years with that to be honest mm. so you know yeah. the way through for me was to to go and seek my spiritual journey and in 2009 was when it really landed that's when I started going and, and doing you know, working on the inner realms and, and developing myself internally with mantras and tantras and a yogic practice. And, you know, it was really through the Vedic line that actually I feel it saved me initially. Oh, beautiful. Um, even though, you know, an aspect of my spirituality was always there with my both my grandparents being elders in various churches and, yeah. you know, like priests actual priests so it's always been in my fucker papa yeah and and yet their christian views even though you know like i i studied the bible and i learned for myself what that meant but uh their christian views were out of alignment with their behaviors you know mm. like and the judgment and the you know the hypocrisy that was there so i you know i witnessed it from my lens of what as witness yeah and felt that there was something there that just never fully resonated although Christ came to me and 
you know, in in his light body form and we had have, have a different relationship with each other, not yeah. one that's, you know, where he's with sacrificed yes. on I a cross. Same. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And people are drinking Beautiful. his blood and eating his body, his flesh, you know, that cannibalistic thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> no. It's um that's interesting because that's my relationship also with Christ came forward and just you know I knew that it, the religion side of it the Bible this the wording the way that they actually showed you how to do it was not the way for me it was just it seemed yeah definitely false and and there was that manipulation and the control stuff in it and it was like mm, no thanks <laughs> but yeah I get it beautiful way when you come into that space with it being in that in that deeper soul divine it's divine mm. yeah absolutely it's it's also called crowd control yes absolutely. <laughs> religion is, is crowd cool. control that is <laughs> yeah absolutely so for me yeah I, I went from that that energy and started working with shamanism and then learning about rongoa so deepening that rongoa practice and the, the miri miri romi romi aspect to that so you know mm. there was a lot of a lot of tools that came in with that kiti and then learn you know more about my culture even though I was always exposed to my culture you know or I belong to a marae or multiple marae actually because there's also also my northern roots so yeah. I have uh, Nati Manu and Naitai connections and those are you know the lineage roots mm -hmm. and um, you know I know that that, that you know is as part of why I feel so deeply about the earth as well because you know the indigenous connection is, is actually yeah. quite strong and you know everyone has an indigenous connection yeah. on some level but uh yeah it felt I felt really honored to be especially doing the the rongoa piece and learning the real you know the real is yeah is actually encoded with Lemurian frequencies so the oh, land was yeah. gifted to Māori and the hula was gifted to the Hawaiians and the body technologies were gifted to Tibet and India so you know we've got right and the plant medicines were gifted to South America so you know we've got all this alchemy happening yeah. around us that uh, you know I kind of started deepening into the the multi-diversity of who we be in, in all of our bloodlines because you know even though we we identify or I identify as being you know of, of Maori heritage mm. I realize that I'm so much more than that yeah <laughs> you know sure. yeah. and so is everybody but you know yeah. it's like really really knowing that that mm. we are so much more than that has been a huge liberator for me it is a eh? there's no it's it, it just takes all all questions out there's no more doubting self there's nothing you really get to know who you truly are that's all you need to know you know and and from there you just walk your path and everything just is right because you know who you are that's the answer yeah absolutely and then I started to dabble in the magical realm and did some magical training so I could work with energy more effectively yeah and uh deepening with uh the the feminine piece so I was for years and years I was part of these big women's groups and women's circles and there were international circles and we used to meet in person and and do regular moon ceremonies and you know it sort of expanded and expanded and the wombs came the womb work started coming in and 
you know learning to work with the divine feminine in deeper ways mm. was a huge piece to to my liberation yeah and bringing in the goddess and the divine mother frequencies and and then moving to Corpu, which actually means the womb of venus so right. was like, heck how does it get any more alchemical than this i oh, know isn't it amazing <laughs> i love it i love how it all just slots in and shows you even more <laughs> so cool. I love it. oh i know oh. it's been amazing uh, and then, you know, learning to work with, um, you know, plant medicines and not just plant medicines, but also health, naturopathy, you know, like that was also part of my, the work that I was asked to start to work with, you know, to support yeah. the well-being of others and, and myself, primarily, primarily for myself and my whanau, but also being able to assist others on their journey yeah. of health and and also sobriety too because I did struggle for many years with with alcohol and yeah mostly alcohol actually you know that was kind of like how I discovered you know that I shouldn't really be drinking because I'm probably allergic to it <laughs> like a lot of a lot of Maori are a lot of us, totally. I was to whiskey. As soon as I smelt whiskey, I just want to, you know, my fist tightened. It's <laughs> like shocking. Not that I even went there, but, you know, I never, I just wouldn't go there because I knew I'd get in a scrap by the end of the night, probably. <laughs> shocking. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Whiskey doesn't always make you frisky, does it? It's oh, it does. Really bloody nasty. <laughs> It can be, really, truly. No, it's never been my drink, thank goodness. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, I, I, you know, was on a sobriety mission as well. So I haven't actually had any alcohol for quite a few years. I mean, apart from in tinctures and things, you know, where you kind of yeah. have to, but I, I yeah. don't have the... <laughs> the need for it and I don't have you know any urges there whatsoever no. so for me it was more my behavior when I did drink yeah because you know I wasn't nice when I drank yeah. and um yeah and sometimes I didn't even remember so <laughs> didn't yeah <laughs> anyway it was good so that, that could get been parked up over the year <laughs> <laughs> yeah that so does. yeah and that's that's a I mean when you know it you, you just know it and then you start realizing well I don't actually need to do it either you know no. something else we fill ourselves up with something don't we other than that sort of thing substance exactly yeah and I also realized that that you know five drinks and basically you the alcohol demons are really working through you yeah mm. Mm. And I, you know, I did a lot of spiritual work with alcohol as well. I spent maybe a year just working with the spirit of alcohol and speaking to it and seeing it for what it really was and actually alchemizing it for my own children. And uh, one of my sons recognized that he's, you know, he gets taken control of too with the, the yeah. alcohol demons. So he's actually now really taking responsibility for his Beautiful. consumption and I'm yeah. really proud of him for that reason so a little bit of work to do with the other son <laughs> yeah and sometimes that doesn't happen until they get to that place where you know it's just they've had enough really mm. hey. but um it's amazing okay. how much it shifts through us like when it shifts through us when we make those shifts within us how it actually ripples through our family, you know, and um, I watch my children change when I did something major within myself, you know, shifted some big trauma or, or wounding, and I saw that shift within them and that they'd start making different choices, you mm -hmm. know, and I started seeing that actually they don't really need to do the work as long as I do. We're going to be able to move everyone along, you know, it was so cool. And now it's a, it's an amazing thing it's all the threads eh? absolutely that mm. reminds me of something that happened recently just actually on the weekend last weekend I 
had my holy womb chakra photograph of my mother, which I use daily to connect to her spirit and the soul of the divine feminine, mm. which is, you know, really the creatrix working through all of us. Yes. So I had it there and my brother walked in and I had the photo of mum there. It's her wedding photo, actually. And she's, you know, 18 years old with her buffy hairstyle and these <laughs> yeah. beautiful eyes. I mean, my mother's actually a real beauty queen. Mm. And uh, yeah, we we looked at, he looked at the photograph. He goes, oh, what are you doing with a photo of mum? And then I was able to share with him, but I felt him soften, you know, because yes. he's always been kind of real angry with mum because yeah. you know, he's still holding on to that thing that happened when he was 12, 13, yes. you know? Yeah. And so, you know, to shift it in me is also rippling out to my other whanau and mm. they're witnessing it and seeing it. Mm, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It is. It is beautiful. And this is what we, like I say, this this lifetime was really important in doing all that, eh? Shifting totally, it. Totally, totally. Yeah. And the other things that I've been working with the spiritual journey, which, um, you know, sort of feel like a, are really helping to inspire others and you know help others mm. so I've, you know once I did my own inner work I was then able to then come out and share it with others in more meaningful ways yeah. which was always kind of my mission anyway I realized that I'm not just here for myself I'm here for everybody else and yeah we have to be of selfless service now because yeah. that's the only way we can actually come back to to truth because mm. there's no separation between any of us no you know we're all relations we're all part of the one fractal of god consciousness mm. and we're finding our way back yeah to wholeness um and so teaching plant medicine was my very first kind of like pathway into what it's what it feels like to be in leadership and sharing the the tonga from our plant kingdom mm. and it was at a time when there was only maybe two or three people sharing that information and you know in some ways they were yeah they were getting large groups of people and taking them through and you know there was kind of like this seemed like there was more more of a need from people to learn it than there was teachers available right so, yes so that made me realize that you know they need more teachers and that's that actually came from um pa Ropita's mouth you know he's one of the great teachers of long medicine pa Ropita and donna carriage and you know i did all of their trainings and went through that that, that whole pathway but uh, I realized maybe a year later that you know I need to actually be teaching this because I really immersed myself very deeply into it yeah. and did a lot of self-directed training as well mm -hmm. so then I started teaching it and I realized that well, I was you know like almost pioneering a new way because suddenly yeah. others yeah that I was teaching was starting to teach, you know, and it was like, wow, there's all this, you know, really energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like yeah. super palpable. And uh, so, yeah, I started teaching in about 2012 by about 2019, 18, 19, I realized that I, you know, there was enough teachers out there now that, you know, and that, and that, six years there was in, now enough teachers out there in different establishments were setting up all over the place and I could just fall back a little bit and start working on another pathway so you know working with the body body work the embodiment the womb alchemy you know all that stuff started really coming through for me and um and then we set up the temple here in 2015 yeah 2015 I got a message from spirit your land is ready and I'm like mm. oh awesome awesome <laughs> so cool <laughs> my yay. manifestation worked yay yeah. I've done five-year manifestation 
And to be honest, it was the la on the very last box that we unpacked when we arrived here. It mm -hmm. had the five-year manifestation with the exact location. It needed to have a water source, its own water source, springs on the property within five kilometers of town, blah, 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 14 acres, everything. So it was like, boom, we got it. Wow. But what... It, what I didn't put on there and which actually came in very strongly when we got here was that the goddess called me here right called us here and this is her wound mm. we're at the center here like in uh hauraki which is you know the basically the center of the four winds and you always hear about it with all these sovereign groups about hauraki being the po holder mm -hmm. uh, well what i didn't know until quite recently is hauraki here in little old thames kopu <laughs> and kopu uh we actually um are the center of the fiscal world right mm, and that's, that's why cool. Hauraki is so important so it's like we we are holding the most immense intense energy for this whole third dimensional system and structure through mm. the, the currencies that it's operating from it's right yeah. here in Hauraki that's beautiful 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 oh I can feel that and like not saying to you you know before we started about going there um, just last year and the change in energy that I could feel from being there years before it was it was you know I don't know I can't even put it into words I can't but it was de definitely changed and beautiful not that it wasn't before mm. but there's something anchored in this now and and it's definitely shifted yeah, beautiful awesome. space yeah and I've looked I mean I've traveled all over the North Island really and I haven't done a lot of travel down into the south, but I've lived in many places around the North Island. Um, and that was the only other place that I thought if I was to shift from Whangarei ever, which I love, but if I ever did, I would go, have gone there. And I've never, there was, you know, I've never gone anywhere else. I've, I've always thought, oh, I wonder if I could live in Taupo, you know, and anywhere else or looked around every time I've been somewhere and never felt that yeah actually this is where I would go if I was going to come anywhere this is where I'd go mm -hmm. so that was interesting because something settled but it yeah it's interesting well it is actually a massive dimensional doorway as well mm. and a lot of people have sightings here we've yeah. had a lot of activity here on the Venua. you know ever since we've set it up as a temple space we've had you know, lots of activity with uh, light beings actually just, mm. manif you know, coming up from the ground, not from above, actually from yes. the And yes. it's like, oh, where? You know, we I think we're a little bit confused about uh, where, where aliens are coming from. They're actually coming from <laughs> inside the earth. <laughs> yes, the, the actual in, inner earth. So I know I've, that's, I've been witness to that myself. Yeah. Mm. And well, we did have had one night where there was a light ship that actually opened its door and all these light beings came out and they were like pillars of rain, they were rainbow pillars, there's maybe eight of them, and they were like bouncing over to us and we were sitting in the spa, but you know, my husband and I, we were having this really powerful love connection between each other. Mm. And it was really quite late at night, you know, it's maybe 10, 10 o'clock, so it was dark. And uh, these light beings literally came over the top of us and then, and then they disappeared. And then I was like, oh, wow, did that really happen? Did you see that, honey? <laughs> and he was, he was like, yeah, yeah. But it was almost like, oh, it was so matter of fact, you know. I don't yeah. even, yeah, it was... It was like, oh, this happens all the time when they actually <laughs> did it to us, you know, and it was like show, revealing themselves to us. So it must have kind of put us in a bit of a hypnotic state because we were like, oh, this is so normal. And so yet, calm, we, yeah. And, and yet afterwards we were like, holy fuck, that was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> hey, yeah, what? <laughs> oh, oh, awesome.
awesome. So, you know, he's he's kind of like um on the spectrum of still, you know, like in the yes. sy system 3D world, you know, with his job and everything. And um at that point anyway, and so for him to witness it and then be able to reiterate to people actually made me feel like I'm not so crazy and yes. always, you know, like seeing all these freaking <laughs> amazing things, no one believing me or you got some backup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh that's awesome wow though and I do know that area is active I remember hitchhiking from Auckland I used to work at the children's health camp Pakaringa and I and I hitchhiked with a friend down to Temps we were going down for the weekend I don't even know why but we actually hitchhiked it was way back and um and stayed in Thames then and it was it was it was a a very weird like for me energetically even then I was only 17-ish and realizing even then that it was very different there was some very different stuff and the crystals on the beach you know there's lots of crystals on the beach it was like all these things were just sort of like you know pulling me in all the time there was a different frequency there for sure always yeah yeah well there mm -hmm. are lots of crystals around here because because of the gold so you know yeah. the gold and the crystal come together mm. yeah. you have to have uh, quartz crystal with gold or, or some yeah. kind of alchemical thing yeah that, uh, but yeah. yeah we do have a lot of crystals here we yeah. don't find a lot of amethyst and yes. carnelian and you know yeah. lots, lots of quartz and jaspers all sorts of different colored yeah. jaspers found all yeah. of them on the beach got bits of them here I've asked to bring home it was re really beautiful and they're gorgeous like actual only because you you know you've found them too and they've been gifted I suppose but you know lovely it's beautiful space so what's um what's sort of brewing for you now tell tell us a little bit about the uh the blue diamond energy and yes. what's going on with that so, and we're going to get you into another chat on another talk show that we have that you can go deep dive into this topic yeah, sure well now mm, okay the blue diamond wow so the blue diamond has actually is quite new for the temple so on new year's day 2023 we had uh i had been at a an event it was a new year's eve event and i was actually part of the uh ceremony where i was actually cleansing everybody and and talking about hini altia the blue ponamu so i was just giving everybody a beautiful cleanse with it you know the doorway has been opened she's here to speak her truth she's here to honor us in deeper ways taking us up into the higher love She's here really to bring that 5D and above consciousness to humanity, you know, to bring us into that state of unity, you know, mm. out of separation into unity where we all feel connected. And so, you know, working with her, so, you know, I've been working with her for maybe four, four months and she started getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I realized that she is actually a Ponamu doorway on her own she when her doorway opened it opened and revealed the blue diamond of te Korti. so i was sitting there uh enjoying my time with friends on new year's day and somebody placed the hawaii tapu map in front of me my friend my beautiful friend ali moore and she mm -hmm. put it in front of me and uh she put it in front of me three times before, but this time, and each time I was like, ooh, something about this map. I don't know what it's it is, but I know it's something special. And anyway, <laughs> so that particular day, she I asked her to bring it, actually, because, you know, I, I felt that there was some resonance. And then she puts it in front of me, and I'm like, oh, my God, there's the blue diamond. I mean, you, the whole map yes. had no color in it whatsoever, but I saw the blue diamond in front of me and I, spirit said you you need to work with this map this is a this is a te, this is tekoti's blue diamond that you're looking at mm -hmm. so i brought it home with me and i did three days of ceremony with the map 
where I was just like fully in the throes of, you know, in between realms and did all sorts of different types of energies with it and just everything started flowing and I got so much information just from that experience. So I realized that Te Kote's Blue Diamond was um, on the map. So it's, I, I'll show you the map actually. I've got a version of it, but it's actually been in a lot of ceremonies and it's kind of got a, bit, a little bit, uh, you know, pakaru from the yeah. various, <laughs> the various places. So I ended up just turning it into a scroll, but this yeah. is it here. And um, yes, we can definitely talk more about it. Yeah. On a later show, but uh, this here was, um, that's the blue diamond in the middle there. Mm -hmm. And um so it's actually, it showed, it revealed to me quite a few things. And in fact, there was even gaps on the map. Like when it, when it got given to me, I saw there were gaps and I got asked, Spirit said, fill them in. They need filling in. So there was a few changes that I needed to make on there just to complete it. And actually just going forward into the now moment, two week, three weekends ago, I had the map maker come to my fuddy, come to the temple, and his name's Cornelius Van Dorp. He actually, he was the scribe for the map. So it was from an ancient tohunga who fought in World War II. He was a Māori battalion soldier, and he ended up in Egypt, and instead of coming back to Aotearoa after the war ended, he stayed on and, and actually went, tutored under Philae the Elder, one of the tohungas, the Egyptian priests. And he learned a lot about the light body, how to activate the light body, how to work with the frequencies and currencies, but he brought it into a format that was un understandable for us. And so... This here, the diamond is actually Hawaii. So it's um this is Temwana Nui Akiwa. So we have Aotearoa, Hawaii Nui is Hawaii, Hawaii Roa is Aotearoa, and Hawaii Pamamao is actually Easter Island. So that's the big triangle, which is the sovereign right. triangle. It's connected to the flag, to the sovereign flag, and you know, there's a lot of things in that. Uh, and the deeper I went, I realized that there's there's a piece missing in there. So even though that's mm -hmm. Temwana Nui Akiwa, what about that top bit? Yes. You know, which didn't make sense to me, but it has here the Bermuda Triangle. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's the missing piece. So if you if you mirror Temwana Nui Akiwa on the map and you you look and you take it up to the Bermuda Triangle, it takes us to Florida. Right. And Florida, you know, what does that mean? It means the flowering. So it's actually, this is a map of our flowering, of our of our diamond light bodies, actually, yeah. the activation of our diamond light body. Yeah. And um, so, so there begins the quest of the blue diamond and you know there's been a lot of stuff happening I've, I've actually you know mm. received also these codings for it which is the hooky always claw actually yeah if you can see it yeah yes yes oh, yeah. yeah yeah it's the hooky always claw and um it's also uenuku so it's rep the rainbows represented in here so we, we, you know, activating all of our dragon lines, our rainbow consciousness, our diamond template, and um, we're doing it in a way that is that meets us in this, you know, the basically the um, in the Te Ao Māori perspective, but also taking us beyond that and birthing us into this whole spectrum of, I guess, Mu consciousness. I'm getting Mu. As, yeah. as in, you know, it re relates to all of the original bloodlines, which we all hold within us. Mm. And and so this quest has actually become a physical quest too. So the longer things have gone on, like we, we ended up launching a wānanga over in 
WA, Western Australia, we took the Blue Diamond teachings over there and started working with the womb wisdom. That we did a holy womb temple and connecting it to the Blue Diamond of the womb. Mm. And um, and when we were there, we kept getting white the white diamond everywhere, like everywhere we went, there was freaking white diamonds, white diamonds this, white diamonds that. And we realized that the blue diamond opens up doorways to other diamonds. Right, yeah. And so the the white diamond of the uh, which we got told was the originals, the original is the white diamond. It's, it actually is the true pathway of peace. So the white trail of Rongo Marairoa, I mean, it's linked into so many things. And Hine Altea, like she's part of this too. She's part of a huge part of the story because we are living waters. We're standing waters. Mm. And as such, we we become crystalline, yeah. you know. When we when we recognize ourselves as waters, we become crystalline and we can go into very, lots of different states, into gases, into gel, into, you know, into actual physical form too. And, uh, yeah, so she's the kaitiaki of the white rainbow and basically the the um she's also the kaitiaki of the the green doorway <laughs> or the green ponamu so you know there's lots of things that are woven in and it can get confusing yeah. but it's also it's a whole layering process it's a whole consciousness it's a whole teaching uh we have been guided to do the physical location journey of Aotearoa and start to map Aotearoa. So the first port of call was to be working with Topo. So anchoring in the, the frequencies and the current season of the Blue Diamond into Lake Topo. We have a whole waka. <laughs> That's our waka there. Yeah. And um, the waka is kind of full next level where there's all these characters on board, which are all archetypes. And each of them hold a specific frequency for us, for our embodiment, you know, like working with, for example, Wajet, who's the, you know, she's the um, cosmic serpent. And, yeah. you know, working with her Ra frequencies, learning how to work with the earth energies and our own energies and the Kundalini life force and the Modi. Uh, and then we have the, you know, the hyperboreal, red dragon so who who actually is like a crystal singer and learns how and learning how to work with our sound tones because yeah. sound is a huge part of this because it's you know the this here the blue diamond is actually there's four blue diamonds in our body but this this is the main one that we that activates all the others yeah. and and this is the syrian doorway through here and it comes down from our chin to the axiotonal lines here. Yeah. And then where our two po are. And then yeah. it comes all the way down to just below, just above our sternum, actually. Yeah. Mm. Below our heart, above our sternum. So it's a massive portal and it's a Syrian stargate. So, you know, this is where we find our liberation and we can alchemize anything from you know mm, from those invocations mm. and manifestation wow. yeah. beautiful <sighs> I was um many years ago given that map from the family of that Tonga that was over in Egypt and um asked if I could decipher it in any way or decipher it Mm -hmm. and yes mm -hmm. and all I knew was for me I kept seeing it like the overlay for sure it was like a spiritual overlay and I said there's like it's it is a map definitely that and it and it's like we're going to find these layers you know all I knew was there were layers underneath that was like laying in and <clears throat> and it was almost like um, saying that it was it was as our evolution happens 
these are the layers you know we, we're sort of climbing through these layers into this this top line here but the sacred geometry in them you know it was like I could see that even now feeling it I can see it overlaying in, in our lands even you know what I mean it's like there's this um yeah it was very interesting I've still got it here too with me <laughs> wow well yeah. one of the things that's um that you know that happened on the journey well when Cornelius Van Dorp came to the temple he you know I showed him the changes that I made on the map because yeah. you know who am I to make changes on this freaking ancient map but actually yeah. who the fuck am I not to as well absolutely wow. <laughs> so yeah. the changes I made was I got asked to put quest quest yeah. ion so it's not only just the question but it's the quest of ion so we're in you know this is what we're doing we're finding our light bodies we you know the light body is where we're going to next yes because yes. we you know the dense body has to be overlaid now with this yeah. light field and we have to you know we've, we've been asked to activate our light bodies mm -hmm. and to be in them regularly because yeah. we don't know when the hour is going to come when things are going to shift you know yeah. we need to be ready with our intentions you know really clear around what we're doing yes uh, absolutely. and so I also put down here remember her story yeah because, you know down here it talks about is there an ending to his story mm. but actually hello what about her story yeah her story sure. has not been told and then the other thing that I was asked to do is put Aotearoa in here yeah because Aotea is is actually well, that's the blue ponamu. Yes. Aotea is the blue ponamu, and that's why everybody came here in search of the blue ponamu, in search of the blue stone, in search of the blue diamond. Mm. That's why they came here. Uh, NASA scientists, this is a Waitaha brother told me recently, NASA scientists have viewed Aotearoa from above the earth, and it's the only geographical location that has blue and purple hues coming from it right yes Everything else on the planet has that and recently i was told that the modi of egypt was transferred over mm. aotearoa right yeah and further to that the um the blue diamond, and this is another tohunga who came. So I've had all these tohungas come to the temple yes. and give us these freaking little tidbits and notes. and Yeah, it all gets added <laughs> in, eh? Oh, it's just been incredible. And, you know, like, my bones tell me mm -hmm. if something's right. You know, I get a little tingling happen and yep. deep inside me. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes get goosebumps too, so, you know, usually those two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bones start ringing, you know, then you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so the Tohonga said that that there were four diamonds in the Ark of the Covenant. Now the delights or the Orion warlords, you know, the soulless beings who run this planet. Yeah. They have found three of them. Right. What they haven't found is the blue diamond. And and so that's why we're on the quest because it's actually I've been given a physical location where it is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and this next journey we're taking to Lake Waikare Moana, we are literally in search of the blue diamond. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> and that's the diamond. It's believed to be the diamond of exile. That was actually removed in a fight between lucifer and archangel michael it was believed to be in the war the orion right. venus war and it got pinged from his crown right and hurtled down into this dimension and it's the one that te Kuti used he was the only freedom fighter here in aotearoa everyone else all the you know the chiefs and every everybody they got they basically got sold out. They sold their people out for fame, power. Uh, they 
many of them are now Freemasons. They're um, 30, you know, we've got to the 33rd degree now. There's a painting in Wellington over, you know, that during lockdowns and when we were all protesting, there yeah. was actually a display in one of the big museums down there, uh, sorry, art galleries of the Māori being becoming the 33rd degree Freemasons. Yes. And it was yes. like, whole they've really gone in with the massive satanic rituals now, you know, yeah. that's just... Mm. yeah no it's it, it's um oh my god we'll get you on this next chat to get right into all of this and and see where we go with it but um that is that is beautiful and huge huge for us here absolutely and, and we've, huge we've known i've i have been told by tupuna all my life that maori were going to lead the way through the the world for the freedom of the world and that for me was always with this map also i always saw in the map that that new zealand was aotearoa was definitely the threshold that the light the new light was going to to be thrown through to the world transmuted through um, and that's always been a thing for me. It's like, yeah, okay, I can get that. But I always knew there was, we haven't, like this was, for me, this this hasn't happened yet. We're still in that journey, as you are explaining there. We're still in this journey. And I've always, I've known it, but I know that it's very close. That's what I do know. I keep getting that feeling, like my bones singing, <laughs> uh, just telling me it's very close. And even now, my whole body <laughs> It's very close and I'm excited about that because it's mm -hmm. because there's just been this really deep knowing that I haven't been able to pick up all the message, you know, with over time it's like just whatever busyness and all the things, but it's it's just a knowing and they've kept me moving towards when I say they, I'm saying my tipona and and mm -hmm. my own being has been pulling me towards just directing me into this you know little bits of info just keep going in when they need to you know as it does like you're saying with your tongas coming in and giving you a bit more of the puzzle it's very cool yeah no it's been just an incredible incredible journey mm. and I'm really looking forward to the search and I you know like yourself next next year which is only a few weeks away yeah. 2024 the year of the emerald dragon yeah, yeah which is actually here to land all the covenants you right. know open up the the uh emerald covenant for us and there's all these aurora lines that are being anchored here in the in the grid because to to my inner standing the feminine grid was collapsed during the atlantean takeover you know the war uh and the dark lords and uh so now now with all this work that we've all been doing all this conscious work we've we've actually we've we've realigned the feminine grid mm, it's actually okay. realigned now and uh part of this blue diamond journey is you know the full reclamation of basically the planet you know it's actually yeah. getting rid of the getting mm. rid of the um the fiscal world and all those, you know, those enslavement codes, we're really fully reclaiming it. Yeah. Yeah. For this sure. Is, this is the shiz. Absolutely. Mm. And interesting you say that. I didn't know that it was the, the Emerald Dragon time next year. I didn't realize that, but huge, big, beautiful, brilliant gold, um, emerald, rather, emerald gold, this this big beautiful dragon that's been presenting I want to say himself herself to me and the color is just like it's way brighter than this here it's like just magnificent oh my goodness I close my eyes and here's this color just streaming in it's just amazing but huge big big being <laughs> is that the emerald tablets behind you hun yes wow yeah. Yeah, mm. very beautiful. Yes, and the emerald dragons connected to the emerald tablets too. Yes, man. It's about, 
huge decide. energy. I'm, I haven't, you know, again, I haven't had the time. I'm hoping to sort of sit in and just really start, yeah, moving in with this, you know, a bit because it's certainly not going away anywhere. And I know they just sort of sit and wait. No, <laughs> I'll just sort of park up for a minute and then I get to it, you know, and, and get the download of what's going on and how it's working. But yeah, beautiful. Yes. Well, it just so happens to be next year is actually the year of my astrological Chinese sign as well. Because, I, you know, it is the wood dragon and the wood dragon is the emerald dragon. Mm -hmm. So next year, um, you know, it's it's the year that I was born under apparently. And um, so I can see I... that there's some uh, most definitely some peaks and some pinnacles that we're reaching next year I feel this is it I feel the blue diamond mm. is part of it you know with Hini Altair yeah. as the kaitiaki of of this frequency and uh yeah we're ready for full flights us we're we ready are hooky or the thunderbird to fly its wings yeah again we so are, and I keep saying to everybody, you know, this next two years are going to be absolutely magnificent. We have not, we have no idea how how amazing they're going to be. And to just ready, prepare now, get get all the stuff done, whatever you need doing, just get it done now because it's coming and it's coming up pretty fast, but it's going to be magnificent. We're, we're going to be flying for sure. Yeah. yeah, a lot of it's connected to the, uh, the, the, light body but also mm -hmm. the um i don't know if you've heard about merlin's chamber mm -hmm. a it's a technology it's a it's a special technology that's come in and um my beautiful brother who's been an inspiration for me on this journey jason hotton he does um he does these beautiful Ber merlin chambers and they're made out of, I've got to show you actually, maybe I can yes. just turn my camera around and show you yep. um, what what they look like. Um, so I've got it set up here. That's my, that's another pinnacle there, but that's, um, yeah, there. Oh, I've yes. My cat in the middle there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gorgeous. She just loves being right there in the, right in the depth of the chamber. But uh, Gorgeous. These chambers have actually got um, multiple layers of uh, all, all, well, they're type of organite, but uh, they're actually, they omit 5 million uh, particles of bovine light. Right. And each, so they're, they're actually three cones in one or three pinnacles in one. And they're working with Tesla technology. So they right. assist us to broadcast consciousness into places, spaces, you know, whatever, and uh, and really help to shift and lift the vibration and bring in, this is the euphoria that I'm talking about as well. Right, you know, I see. Things, euphoric love bombs and things like that. So we're sending euphoric love bombs to people. I've got a double chamber. So mine's actually a diamond and right. I've got a blue diamond chamber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's and, exciting. And we broadcast consciousness through visualization and through invocation and our sound seed. So it's all working in collaboration to shift dimensions, help heal cancer and, you know, change weather and right. That's the chamber I've been, that's the chamber I know is <laughs> is not anything in this physical realm, but in the chamber of, of that consciousness with Merlin and the energy of that, um, which mm. yeah, I used to go into years ago and um, sit and emanate that energies. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how very cool is this? So what what have you got going on now what what is that you've got workshops or anything you know any any um what yeah Let, go there oh, <laughs> yes um so we've got the journey coming up on the 20th of january 20th to the 25th at lake waikare moana and that's going to be um 
activating the waters there, Y144, which is, you know, a whole code in itself, 144, 144,000, yes. you know. Yeah. This is um this is, you know, what what it's what's happening. Uh, and that is the actual physical quest for the blue diamond. So mm -hmm. we will be going to the location that was gifted to to us, and um, be really physically searching. But there's going to be so many other things, you know, like it's a whole wananga activation process. Yeah, and yeah. Working with the holy womb and the holy waters as well, because um, you know even Tane, they've got they've you know they they are actually working through their mother's womb. And it's deepening the connection with the mother principle of the planet, yeah. which is so important right now. And it's been the missing piece for a long time. Yeah. Uh, we also have, I've got a, I'm um, going over to Queensland to a place in Koopi Darbin and going to be sharing the, um, the Holy Womb uh, and the Blue Diamond teachings over there doing a priestess initiation. Beautiful. Uh, so that's 8th, 9th and 10th of March and uh, we've also got the Equinox down in Castle Hill which will be the, so if we've got three locations in Aotearoa to activate before the Blue Diamond, well actually there's four locations, we're also going to go down to Haast which is where the, it's known as Hoki, you know like Haast Eagle, the big Hoki mm -hmm. boy. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Can't, the Thunderbird, actually, Aotearoa's Thunderbird. So we're going to go down there as well. Um, when we do the March Equinox journey, uh, and that's where Hini Altair is. That's the only place on the planet that has Hini Altair is in the in in Hast. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's another clue as well. Very cool. And then I had, lastly, I have, um, this is stuff that is pre-planned, Sirius New Year, we're going to be going to one of the locations of in the kingdom of Tonga and um, swimming with the whales, we're going to do a Blue Diamond Temple over there too, working with the Sirius. Oh, and that's this next following year, that or this that's, new year? This, yeah, this um, Sirius New Year, so, you know, twenty between the 20th and the 20 um i think it starts on the 22nd oh. to the 27th of of um july right yeah 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 so that's that's all that stuff on the menu and mm, beautiful and how and, can the, and sorry actually the other thing just quickly we're going to then, I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but we've got a big journey. It will have to happen after Sirius New Year, but uh, we've got the big excursion that we're doing from Aotearoa to Hawaii to Florida to Hawaii Pamama, which is Easter Island. And then and then we want to go to um, Tahiti and right. anchor, anchor the, go to Tapu Tapu Aotea and complete the journey there before we come back to Aotearoa. Wow, awesome. That will be fun. A lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's so cool. So um, how can people get in touch with you? So I guess my I'm quite active on Facebook. Yeah. I know. I, I want to set up also a um Instagram, an active Instagram page, but I'm still learning how to navigate that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Tero Kura Kingi Saya on Facebook, or uh, Medicine Woman of Moo at gmail dot com uh, is the other way, and yeah, or Messenger under Tero yeah. Kura. Can you say us? So yeah, that's probably the easiest way to get in touch with me. Beautiful. That's so lovely. And it's been such a beautiful chat. I've really enjoyed it. And I know there's so much more to, you know, that we could go into, which is like mm -hmm. we were saying, we'll get you on the other um, chat show, shoot the breeze and get into a bit more of that conversation around the the blue diamond work and things that you're doing um and so people can join in tirakura to any of those events that you're doing like going down to the south island things 
Yes, I feel that uh, there is probably some preliminary things that they would need to know before coming and joining in because, you know, this is, we've yes. sort of got the waka already moving and there's, a you know, there's some catching up to do for people who want to slot in at those times, but I'm happy for others to come on board yeah. and um, I'm very interested in, in working with the dragon people as well because, you know, next year is all about the dragons and um, I, you know, I love working with the dragon consciousness, which is basically mm. the ethers, the three ethers. Yeah. Um, frequency, magnetics, and vibrations. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. And thank you for all you're doing, for sure. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be people getting in touch with you and um, you'll just carry on being busy. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah doubt. well actually I'm going to carry on being having fun because of yes. I'm not doing it <laughs> yeah absolutely eh? and it is such fun when you're just following your heart and mm. the call and the passion is there isn't it it's just so much fun it's not like work at all and it isn't even busy it's like there's just this flow that happens isn't it it's gorgeous absolutely yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much again, and um, and much, much love. Love thank to you, you so much for that. Yeah. We'll talk again. Bye bye. Bye everyone.